William Saliba, what on earth have you been up to? You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to another live edition of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu. And on this live show, we're going to be discussing William Saliba, his antics, his videos, his interviews, because there's more than just the video when it comes to William Saliba. And that's why I felt it was worthy um, of doing a video about or doing a podcast about because it, this Saliba thing is starting to become a bit of a concern outside of just that video. Even if that video didn't get leaked, you would still be sitting here, I think, as an Arsenal fan, or most people would, wondering what on earth he is trying to do. What is he trying to do to his prospects of playing for a club the size of Arsenal? Now, I understand, right, that, that William Saliba has not, maybe been given the opportunities that he feels he deserves. And I can understand why he feels somewhat aggrieved by that. I really can, uh, because it's often the case, isn't it? Where a signing is made by one manager. By the time that sign-in is ready to contribute, that manager has moved on. Another manager has come in. And for whatever reason, it seems that Mikel Arteta doesn't fancy William Saliba, doesn't feel like he's ready, didn't feel like he could contribute this season and decided to to leave him out of the squad. We know that Arsenal tried to loan him out during the summer window and that didn't happen. That didn't come to fruition. And eventually when the January window come around, Arsenal were able to do a deal that saw him join uh, Nice until the end of the season. And credit to William Saliba in terms of what he's doing on the pitch right now. He is performing. He is producing. He won a, a player of the month award um, out in France. So he is doing well in terms of what he's bringing to the table on the pitch. But William Saliba is not helping himself off of the field. And this is my big, big problem. Now, I'm going to come to what you guys are saying in the chat as well. Actually, let me let me say a big hello, first of all, to everybody who's in the live chat, because I can see there are plenty of you with us already. Um, so big hello. Uh, good afternoon to every single one of you. Uh, can I just ask before I forget? Make sure you smash the like button on the video if you haven't already. It really, really helps um, push the video up to uh, the recommended videos. And in turn, you get more eyes on the channel and in turn, the channel grows. Um, and that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to build uh, a big community where we can talk about Arsenal. Uh, we all respect one another's opinions and we can have good, sensible debates. Um, so, yeah, let's 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 get back to William Saliba because... <sighs> My initial thoughts when I saw it, and I'm talking about that video, which I'm sure many of you have seen uh, on social media of obviously a colleague or a teammate sitting next to him, basically touching himself inappropriately in a room full of lads. When I first saw it, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, what What is this? What, what are you doing? Like, why... Why have you videoed this? And then I remembered about the state of society right now and the fact that we live in a world where people, whenever they see something that's a little bit outside of the box, maybe a little bit crazy, maybe a bit inappropriate, maybe something that shouldn't happen, people's first reaction nowadays is to pull out their camera phones. And first of all, if that was me sitting there, and a friend or a colleague or a teammate is doing that, my first instinct is not to get my phone out. So, you know, it, it's easy to to really have a go at William Saliba about that, but actually that would be the instinct of a lot of people nowadays, you know, just to, and, and I'm not saying it's right. What I'm saying is the instinct of people now is to pull out their camera phone and film 
anything that's a little bit outside of the box, you know, like in the hope that it might go viral or even just for their own, you know, for their own banter. I, I don't know. I, I don't get why he did it. I don't get why he recorded it. But you should know that in a position like that, if you record something like that, there is a good chance this day and age that that recording, that video will get into the hands of the wrong people. And when it does, the backlash, you know, is, um, it is huge. And the backlash is something that is probably helping Mikel Arteta's case that says that William Saliba is not ready, not mature enough, not quite at the level to play for Arsenal. So, I go back to the point I made right at the top of the show. I don't think for a second that William Saliba has been given enough opportunity, given what Arsenal paid for him, given the hype that surrounded this guy when Arsenal signed him. I completely agree with those who feel as though Mikel, you know, maybe has got this one slightly wrong. You know, but I can see the other side of it as well. Has Mikel looked at it and gone, well, there's something there, but you're not at the level whereby I will pick you every week. And so a low move actually to get you to that level is probably more beneficial than you uh, coming in and out of games, than you, you know, being in and out of the side. I don't know. Ultimately, though, after Mikel Arteta has taken that decision, that decision to move William Saliba out on loan and, and give him an opportunity to continue his development and has talked about the fact that he still has a future at Arsenal Football Club. If it were me, if I were William Saliba and I was properly motivated, I'd be going out there proving myself, which he's doing on the pitch. You know, he's performing really, really well over in France. And we know that the, the level is very different. You know, we know that Ligue 1 is not the Premier League, we know it's not La Liga, we know it's not Serie A, we know it's not even the Bundesliga. We know that Liga is a little bit um, lower in terms of the overall standard. But just for me, this kind of thing doesn't help William Saliba in any way, shape or form. It might be old. Some of you are talking about it in the comments that it might be an old video. It might well be an old video. Well, why take it in the first place? That 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 would be my point. Secondly, who the hell has leaked it? You know, who's leaked that? Is that someone who you think is um who who you think is your friend that's leaked that? Because that ain't gonna do your career any favors. It's gonna incite vile abuse online, uh, which I'm not condoning, but it's it's gonna happen off the back of something like that being leaked. Some of you are talking about the time that the timing of the leak, you know, he's he's been speaking about Mikel Arteta again and all of a sudden that video comes out. So is that someone looking to have a negative impact on, on William Saliba's career? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just speculating. You know, Thomas in the chat says the video is from 2017, in which case he was an Arsenal, an Arsenal player, but that still doesn't make it right, does it? You know, he is now part of the Arsenal family. He is a representative of Arsenal Football Club. And so his conduct, even with the club or before he joined the club, is going to be under massive scrutiny now. So let's let's just clarify where we are on the video. So, And I want to know what you guys have to say as well. I'm going to come to your comments in just a second. But for me, the video is disgusting, stupid unnecessary it probably in William Saliba's eyes at the time he recorded it was never going to see the light of day and certainly wasn't going to be plastered all, all over social media but that's the risk you run nowadays when you're in a position of influence when you're a footballer who's under the spotlight all the time that, that that's what happens you know that's you can't put yourself in those situations. And, and I appreciate that he was younger. Um, and I appreciate that he may have been less mature than he is now. If I were him, I'd, I'd probably be devastated at the fact that this has come out. I'd be looking to find out where it came from, obviously. But 
you know, it's just it, it just doesn't look good for William Saliba. And I said that I was more concerned about the wider picture with William Saliba rather than just this video. And I, I really am. I'm really concerned about the constant need for William Saliba to to criticise Mikel Arteta, to talk about the fact that he was judged on, on a very small sample size, to talk about the fact that he feels he deserves game time. I'm all for backing himself. I'm all for being self-confident. I think it's very important, particularly in a world like the football one. I think that's key. And I don't knock him for, for having that feeling, for feeling that way or for you know, feeling as a, a little bit of injustice in the sense of he wasn't given the chance to prove himself. But what I cannot get behind is the constant need to go out in the press and and and, and make these comments. What is it? What is it doing for William Saliba? Somebody explain to me what William Saliba thinks he's going to gain by speaking badly of Mikel Arteta. And I said it earlier on in the on the podcast. I don't necessarily think that Mikel Arteta has been fair with William Saliba. I think that William Saliba does deserve more opportunities. Um, I think he did deserve more than he was given. I, I, I just think that the combination of all of this, i.e. The, the, the interviews, and it's not just one interview, you know, we're talking about two, three, four interviews now where he's done exactly the same thing with different media outlets. It's as though he's doing his very best to get that out to as many people as possible and, and to kind of get himself in the limelight. And I, when I think he should just be focusing on his football, you know, he's just got to be focusing on his football. So that that's not helping. That's terrible. That is a problem for me. That is a, a lack of professionalism, if you ask me. If I was William Saliba, my head would be down. I'd be focusing on my football because... I would want to play for a massive club like Arsenal rather than somebody like Nice. And Nadine, one of our members in the chat says, um, a move away from Arsenal. That's the only thing I can think of in terms of what William Saliba might be looking to achieve from this. But if you're a big football club with values, with pride, with, you know, with a reputation, with a history, would you want to touch somebody who's, who's been involved in something like this? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think I would. If I were at Real Madrid, if I were at Bayern Munich, if I were at Barcelona, if I were at Inter, would I look at someone like William Saliba right now, who, let's face it, still has a long way to go in terms of proving himself as a top, top level player. <laughs> One player at a month award in France is not enough for me um, to say that he's the finished article just yet. But if I were one of those clubs, this would put me off of this would put me off of William Saliba, you know. And it might have happened years ago, and it might have been with harmless intentions. It might not have been intended to to get out there or anything like that. It just feels like it's a slip up, and a slip up that's come to compound the other failings of William Saliba, in my opinion, in the recent months, which are his constant desire to come out in the press and talk about his lack of game time and his lack of chances. You know, say that you're disappointed by it. Say that you wanted, um, you know, you felt that you were ready, but actually no. And But now you, you've got an opportunity to prove yourself and that's what you're fully focused on doing. That's the right thing for a footballer in William Saliba's position to be saying. To be taking jibes and, and, and you know, poking at the manager, who, a manager who's already shown, by the way, that he won't take this kind of shit. You know, he's he's got rid of Matteo Genduzzi. He he moved Mesut Ozil out of the club. He does not react well um, to players doing what William Saliba is doing. And that is airing Arsenal's dirty laundry in public. And I agree with Arteta on that. It shouldn't be aired in public. You know, it, there's no need for it. So I just think that the combination of this and everything that William Saliba has been doing in the last couple of months, which is speaking, in my opinion, out of line, is going to really damage his prospects of coming back to Arsenal and establishing himself as a regular. That's my take on it. That's my view on it. Let me see what you guys are saying in the live chat. I realise the chat has moved on um, a lot. Um, 
<laughs> while I've been talking, but Inter Yanan says, um, I don't care what's going on off the pitch. He's just one player of the month. Mans Anderson says, hope he gets a chance from Arteta, even though it's disgraceful that he was leaked and he was 17 at the time as well. And the homophobia is running wild. Zero out gay players in the Premier League speaks ton, tons. Yeah, look, the, the homophobia that's come off the back of this is, is obviously disgusting, disgraceful, embarrassing, and there's absolutely no need for it. Um, and and I, you know, I strongly condemn that. The, the problem is here is that in this video coming out, he's opened himself up to all sorts of criticism. And sadly, given that the way people are nowadays in the reactionary nature of, of people and the fact that they can basically go on social media, say whatever the hell they want and be completely unaccountable um, is, um, is a worry and unfortunately breeds this kind of behavior. But you're absolutely right. The homophobia is wrong. Um, it's not needed and it's not helpful either. Um, RG, it says, what the... F was he doing? Yeah, agreed. Um, Jonathan Porter says, I'm really concerned for Saliba. He lost family members last year and he wakes up to this. Something that he probably forgot about that happened years ago. The filming is odd, but kids do odd stuff. Yeah, I, I agree. Look, if it's happened years ago, um, you know, it's obviously unfortunate that now at a time where there is quite a bit of media attention on Saliba, you know, where, where he's not made it at Arsenal necessarily just yet. He's been moved out on loan. He's been talking in the press. Obviously, the timing of this is horrendous for him. Um, but yeah, it goes back to what I was saying, doesn't it, Jonathan, about the the whole need to film everything. And it's it, honestly, I, I see it wherever I go. I, I go to Arsenal matches, right? And I'll be in the stadium. And I appreciate that for some people, they don't always get to go to the game. Like, I appreciate that I'm in a very lucky position that I live close by, I, you know, I live in, in North London and I'm able to go and watch Arsenal. I appreciate that for some people, when they come to the Emirates Stadium, it is a very big occasion. It is a special occasion. It is it's something that they don't get to do often for whatever reason, because they live far away, because, um, you know, they, they, they don't, they're working or, or whatever. But I am always constantly amazed by it how people nowadays are obsessed with videoing and taking pictures of everything rather than actually putting their phone in their pocket and just taking in the experience around them. Now, I'm not saying that the situation William Saliba was in was one in which you necessarily want to take in the atmosphere around you, but I'm just making the wider point that this need to video, to photograph everything nowadays actually does more harm than good. You know, what it does is it, gives people or, or it, it creates a record of events that shouldn't ever see the day of light. It it puts a evidence of things that are wrong and it gives people the opportunity that if they get hold of this evidence, if you like, they can easily make somebody's life a misery on social media. So it's a culture thing as well, you know, and, and it's a culture thing that, that's been around for a while now. The constant need to photograph, to video, to record every single action, every single event or non-event, every single outrageous moment. Why do we need to film everything? Patrick says, it's not only Saliba, is the guy doing the deed and the rest who are just standing there on their phones acting like everything is all right. Guess I'm just a weird fella, not catched up with the time. Uh, Banos, one of our members, says, being an Arsenal fan is probably the unhealthiest decision I've taken. Yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult. Uh, River Wild says, this morning has been wild. Um, Nick Dressler says, why are they all just sat around like a camp, sat around the guy like a campfire though? Yeah, it's, it's odd, isn't it? It is odd. Um, Omar says it's disgusting. Inti Yadan says it's a bit ridiculous to throw Saliba under the bus to try and score some points to blindly back the manager. I don't think that's what anyone's doing. I think I think it's ridiculous to suggest that that's what people are doing. You know, if, if it was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in that video, the reaction would be the same. You know, the reaction would still be outrage. I acknowledge that with William Saliba, the fact that he is not in the team, the fact that he has had to be sent out on loan, the fact that he keeps mouthing off in the media about the lack of opportunities and criticising the manager obviously puts more heat on him. But he's created that environment for himself. 
with the way he just simply cannot keep his mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Focus on the task in hand. Go and prove yourself to the point where Mikel Arteta has no choice but to bring you back to the club or somebody else, a Real Madrid, a Barcelona, an Inter Milan, a Bayern Munich, a Manchester United, a Liverpool, come along and say, you know what? You lot don't rate him, but we rate this guy. Here's £30 million. We're taking him with us. William Saliba's career is not over because he moved to Nice on loan for the second half of one season. But William Saliba's career could be on the line if he doesn't keep his mouth shut and he ends up being painted as one of those footballers who is just constantly looking for the limelight, constantly looking for controversy. And over the years, we've seen many, many talented footballers fall by the wayside because of bad advice, because of bad attitude, because of their desire to be in the public eye and go and spout shit in the media. You know, I can think of a couple of, of really good examples. And one that always springs to mind for me is Nicholas Anelka. You know, what a talent he was. And, and, Yes, he had a good career, but he went on to become a bit of a journeyman, didn't he? He ended up at all sorts of clubs, never found a home because of shit that was going on behind the scenes because he had bad advice, because he was outspoken when he didn't always need to be. And that put him in a position that when he was stitched up by the French media, the way he was, obviously, with that whole thing with, with Raymond Domenech, that the, the, the picture of... of Nicholas Anelka had already been painted by all of the previous and that previous contributed to him being made a villain. You know, if that previous ain't there, it's very easy to gloss over certain situations. For me though, this is, um, this is not helpful for William Saliba in any way, shape or form. And it's not, um, it's not about scoring points uh, for the manager, but it certainly does back the argument. And, and only back the argument, which is just an argument, that, that Mikel Arteta was right to say he's he's not quite mature enough and he's not quite progressed enough. Uh, Bacon Man says, Arsenal career over before it even started. Um, Colin Jr. says, how can Willow just record the man them doing a the madness right next to him? Anyways, he's still a young prospect. I don't care. Yeah, th- look, and this doesn't take away from the guy's talent. You know, he's still in the eyes of many, a very talented defender. All I'm saying is, is that this is a black mark against his name that doesn't need to be there. And it could have all been avoided if, um, if he didn't record it, you know, and on top of that, the reaction, I think, and I genuinely believe this, and I, well, I can speak for myself. My reaction to this is one of greater outrage because of my disagreement with the way he's conducted himself in interviews of late. So it's a combination of those things. So this is just another thing to add on to the pile of reasons why William Saliba may not ever have an Arsenal career, which is a shame because we invested big money in him, obviously because we thought that, you know, he was, um, he was of a certain level of a certain standard and someone who had a massive career ahead of him. So what a shame it would be to see that go by the wayside because of, Silly moments like this. Uh, Nadine says Saliba is running his gums too much. He needs to let the football do the talking. Yeah, you, you're right. Um, the armchair Guna says best to separate the video that has leaked today and all the other stuff. They seem unrelated. Yeah, they're not directly related. Uh, you know, I take that on board. Um, but it's impossible to completely separate them because when you're talking about the interviews, for me, they show a lack of maturity. And recording something like that for a bit of a laugh, whether it was yesterday, whether it was two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, feels like it's immature as well. So although they're not completely related in terms of individual incidents, they both show the same thing, which is, in my opinion, an immaturity. Um. Ekene Ogboro says, Harry, are we going to be objective in today's discussion? I think I am being objective, but that's what the live chat box is about. It's for you guys to share your comments and I'll read out as many as I possibly can, whether they're in agreement with me or not. It's not a problem for me. Um, I don't think I've not been objective here. The majority of people that are tuned in to the podcast are here to, to listen to my views and my opinion. So I'm doing 
So I'm sharing exactly that. And I like to think that um, I'm being fair by sharing with uh, you guys some of the opinions of others in the live chat as well. Uh, big hello to Adam. He says, hi, Harry, in the chat. I hope you're all well. I'm a fan of Saliba's style of defending. I have to say, I don't think he'll end up playing for us. Arteta isn't going anywhere and his comments make it unlikely. Yeah, look, the comments aren't helping anyway. The comments weren't helping prior to this video even being leaked. So I just, that, like I keep saying, this is just another thing in the long list of stuff that is, it makes Mikel Arteta feel and believe that William Saliba is not quite ready. Um, Young Palace says it was an old Snapchat. You can tell by the old Snapchat layout. So someone leaked that old video. Yeah, uh, that's probably, yeah. Um, look, I think we can all agree William Saliba is not going to go and leak something like that himself. So it's, it's clear that this has come from somewhere else, someone else. We don't know who. Um, but I'll go back to my original point. If you don't record crap like that, nobody can get hold of it. Nobody has any record of what's gone on. And this situation is completely avoided. So I would just question people's, and it's not just William Saliba, I would question people's um, instinct nowadays in out-of-the-box situations, which seems to be to, to pull out their phone and record it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Peanut Butter Jelly Time says, I'm sorry, professional players don't act like this. Um Yusuf Razak says, why do we always end up buying players with horrible attitude? Saliba, Genduzi, Galas, and Nazri. Um, Invictus Track says, I only find this situation weird, especially to film it. It's dumb, but it's nothing to make a drama out of. Yeah, it, it is weird. Um, would I say that William Saliba's Arsenal career will be finished off the back of just this video? No. Um, but I do fear that a combination of this video and, as I've already mentioned, other factors uh, are making it more and more difficult um, for him to persuade Mikel Arteta that actually he is ready, actually he is mature enough. And when things like that come out, it's not helpful, is it? It's not helpful to anyone. Um, Samuel Ingram says, people were hyping up William Saliba like he's Franco Baresi, Paolo Maldini or Yap Stam. That's another good point as well. You know, the... The hype around William Saliba, I can't say that I can 100% right now say it's justified because we haven't seen enough of him in an Arsenal shirt. And as I said, you know, it's all good doing it in France and and um, fair play to him. And I guess you can only judge him on the position that's in front of him and all of that stuff. But yeah, the, the, the hype and the outrage at him not being part of the Arsenal squad was obviously over the top, but it just, it just feels like everything's over the top nowadays. You know, everybody has to be so um, extreme in their view on everything one way or the other. There is no middle ground. There is no sensible opinions anymore. There are no sensible views. It's, it's pure outrage or pure defense for the player. There's no, there's no in between. There's very few people who will sit there and say it's wrong. It's stupid. Is it actually though? Does it actually make a difference to his footballing ability? Um, but equally, it shouldn't have happened. You know, you, you won't get that that balanced view anywhere near often enough. And I think that's a problem as well. Uh, Xander says, firstly, the homophobic comments on social media aimed at Saliba are disgusted. This is poor judgment on Saliba's part relating to both the video and the interviews. He needs better advisors around him. Not the end, though. Yeah, I agree. And I agree it's not the end. Um, but what it is, is it's, um, it makes it more difficult, I think, for him to turn things around. Because it, if a manager already doesn't necessarily trust you, doesn't necessarily believe in you, um, you are essentially, by finding yourself in, in situations like this, arming him with with ammunition to fire you out of the club. You know, and, and that's what, this does it doesn't determine in in isolation whether or not William Saliba has a future at Arsenal, but it does back Mikel Arteta's argument around him not necessarily being ready. Maybe not from a football perspective, but in terms of a maturity uh, perspective. And yeah, the video was 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 done ages ago, but 
that's kind of irrelevant because the video has been leaked today at a time when William Saliba's Arsenal career is probably already on the ropes, um, you know, in, in the eyes of some. This just isn't helpful in any way, shape or form. Um, Colt out of the Red Barrel says, this kid is obviously intentionally going all out to show the club that he doesn't want to play for us. Frankly, he's embarrassed the club enough already and should be got shot of for whatever we can get. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that share that opinion, that they feel um, disgraced by it, you know, upset by it. Um, they feel like it's it doesn't fall in line with Arsenal as a football club's values or, or you know, any football club's values for that matter. But yeah, it's, um, you know, I understand why people are feeling that way. I understand why people are feeling that, you know, it's not perhaps as big a deal as, as it is to some. It's a difficult one. I'm kind of in the middle. It's not something I'm going to dwell on for ages, um, but it's certainly newsworthy today. It's certainly made waves. Um, in the Arsenal fan base today and, and spark plenty of discussion. Um, as Banos says as well, make sure you smash that like button. Let's actually check in on where we are uh, on the likes right now. There are over 400 of you watching us live right now across the multiple platforms, but we've only got 80 likes, guys. So let's um, let's get that to at least 150. I mean, surely we can get 150. There's There's enough of you in the chat. So if you haven't already, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're enjoying the content, if you're enjoying the discussion, if you're enjoying what we do here um, on the channel, on the podcast, then um, you can also support um, and receive a number of benefits perks, which includes uh, members only content by clicking on the link in the description to our membership page. Have a look at the tiers available. Sign up if you wish. I'd love to have uh, as many of you as possible on board. We've got plenty of uh, dedicated, really helpful and respectful members as already, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Um, but if you're fancying joining the family and joining us in the Discord server uh, to talk all things Arsenal, basically around the clock, then come and join us. Become a member by clicking the link in the description and uh, we welcome you with open arms. Also, this week's bit of members-only content is a bit of a deep dive uh, into Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So we'll be doing that. Um, I'll be recording that later today, and that'll be out with you guys tomorrow. Uh, so for gold members and above, keep your eyes peeled for that one. Right, let's move on. Um, what else have we got? The, the chat's moved on a lot again, so apologies if I... Um, if I miss out on some of your some of your comments, um, feel free to drop them in. Um, feel free to drop them in uh, after the video as well. If you're watching this back on playback, I'd love to hear them. Um, Gun De Kagan says, "Dude, I heard about some Saliba controversy this morning on AFTV, but nobody would say what happened. So I tuned into a Hugh Wizzy live and only saw his censored clip." which was enough to be disappointed. Yeah, I mean, look, most people have seen it now um, without being too crude, without turning this from a <laughs> PG podcast to an explicit one. Essentially, William Saliba was sitting next to someone in what you can assume was a dressing room who basically had his piece out and was touching it um, in a weird way. Uh, that that's basically the the ins and outs of um of, of what um you know of what um of what occurred in that video craig barlow in defense of saliba says he hasn't got parents to judge him or look up to he's proving he's very immature i mean craig uh, i've got a lot of sympathy for saliba because obviously he lost a parent as recently as last year and we know that was a problem but I think knowing knowing whether that's right or wrong or weird or not at 18, 17, I think is... Uh, what I'm trying to say is I think most people at that age will be at a, a, a maturity level whereby they can know or understand whether that is weird, not weird, right or wrong. And, and I don't... I, I think that's... I think if I was... And I can, look, I can't put myself in someone else's situation, but I'm a dad, I've got a son. And if, you know, if God forbid something happened to me, 
um, when he was 17, 18 years old and he did something like that, I would like to think that I'd have done my job in educating him about something like that before then, well before then. Um, and look, he's going to learn from it. You know, he's going to learn from it. I'm sure he won't be pulling out his phone in a rush the next time he finds himself in a weird situation like that. But I just, I, I just, I don't buy the excuses. You know, I, I think it was done naively. I think it was done not with the intention of obviously it's seeing the light of day as a bit of banter between teammates. Maybe I don't know, but whatever it was, the fact that it's got out into the public is the issue, um, is the bigger issue than it, than what, then I guess what actually occurred, you know, it, I don't know. I don't know. You're, you, you're only like, I saw that and I was like, my, my view on it was what the hell is he doing? Other people will watch that and go, Oh my God, that's disgusting. Other people will watch that and be genuinely offended. So that kind of action, that clip, will bring out different reactions in different people. And there will be some who will go, oh, that's weird and move on from it. There will some who will go, that's a disgrace, get him out of our club. And there will be some who will go, who will be in the middle, a bit like me and say, what the hell is he doing? Yes, it's disgusting, but look at the bigger picture. And when I say that I think that William Saliba's Arsenal career is on the ropes right now, it's not just because of that video. It's because of the interviews. It's because of everything that's gone on before. Will William Saliba even want to play for Arsenal after all of that? You don't know. Um, LK says, Harry, you pick Saliba and the hype. You pick on Saliba and hype the average manager. You're over the top, Harry, with backing Arteta. Okay. Um, I'm over the top. I'm wrong. I'm clueless yet. Yeah you are watching and you're commenting on the video which kind of makes like are you here to have a, a, a discussion about it if you are then why am I over the top in backing Mikel Arteta you know let's 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 get into it let's discuss it that's what I want to do I don't want people to just go oh you're over the top you're wrong you're right you're wrong you're right let's have a discussion about it um my view is that Mikel Arteta um, still deserves the backing of Arsenal supporters. My view is that <laughs> that kind of, that leeway that he's obviously been afforded by many at the moment will not exist next season. And then I think he can be judged more harshly when he's had more time to rebuild, when he's, you know, had more time to embed his philosophies, his style of play. And... I can assure you, when you say I pick on Saliba, but I overhype the manager, I can assure you that if Mikel Arteta, if there was a leaked video of Mikel Arteta sitting in a changing room, with that going on next to him, filming it, I would be just as outraged. I'll be just as disgusted, just as disappointed, just as shocked. All of the different combinations of feelings that you get from seeing that video I'd have applied them to Mikel Arteta as well. That, that, that It's not an agenda against William Saliba. It's not me protecting Mikel Arteta. If that was Mikel Arteta, I'd go as far as saying I'd want him sacked on the spot. Genuinely. But we're not talking about Mikel Arteta here because Mikel Arteta is mature enough and not stupid enough to get himself in a position like that. That's the difference. You can have a go at Mikel Arteta for a lot of things, but you can't have a go at him for his professionalism. I don't think that there's any doubt that Mikel Arteta is, is fully focused and he's, you know, 100% in it to succeed. You know, that, that that's where I'm at with, with Mikel Arteta. Do I think he gets everything right? No, not always. Um, he certainly doesn't, but I don't think it's for a want, uh, for a lack of trying or a lack of professionalism. Uh, Dan Flowers says, really no need for the overreaction. It's an old video. Without context, it's just weird. That's it. End of discussion. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Mike Hertz says, I think fans need to chill. Kids do stupid things all the time. They do. But unfortunately, if they do, if they keep a record of it, um, 
then there is always a chance that it might come to light. And when it comes to light, unfortunately, unfortunately, the world is not mature enough to look at stuff like that and go, kids do stupid things all the time. Mike Hertz is, um, you know, Mike Hertz is, is, is mature enough and, and lots of you in the chat are mature enough, but not everybody in the world um, it, it is mature enough. And that's why this horrible abuse that's come his way off the back of it, the homophobic stuff, um, the inappropriate stuff, that's where that all comes from because ultimately people are not mature enough to look at it the way Mike is, Mike is looking at it. I think it's wrong. Um, I think it does damage his prospects of of getting into the Arsenal team going forward. But is it something that I would crucify him for? No, it's not. Um, it's not. And and I'll wrap up my thoughts on the whole situation overall at the end. Uh, but let's just pick up a couple more comments. Uh, Jonathan says, Harry, I'm worried about the fact we are taking Arteta's word for who in the squad is not ready to leave for Saliba not being ready and Arteta has regressed from 8th to 11th. The question is, we sh the question we should ask is if Arteta is good enough. AntCL1082 says, the fans who backed Saliba over Arteta have gone silent. Craig says, the problem is the young generation now, back in the 80s, 90s, football social media wasn't around, but kids still did stupid stuff, Harry. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. And that I was talking about it earlier on in the podcast. I said that the problem is or half of the problem here is that the the mindset and the mentality of of, of a kid in 2020 or, or 2017 or 2016, whatever you're saying, the video was recorded. Th their their first port of call is to pull out their phone. That's their that's their mentality. That's their attitude. That's what they do. That's their go to, and that is wrong. That needs to be cut out because that leads to situations like this one. Um, you know, and that's that. I'm going to leave it there. Um, and I'm going to be back later on today with another stream. Um, at around about 4.30 PM. So, so keep your notifications on for that. We'll be coming back uh, on. We'll be talking about some other Arsenal bits and pieces as well. We'll be um, discussing the Kieran Tierney fitness thing. We'll be talking about some other bits and pieces as well. Um, so come and join me for that as well. To, to, to just wrap up my views on this whole incident, my views are simple. It's wrong. It's stupid. When you're in a position like William Saliba is, where you're going to be under public scrutiny, you simply don't put yourself in those situations. Now, I'm not saying William Saliba could... Um, I'm not saying that William Saliba could stop his colleague or teammate or whoever it was next to him doing what he did. It's stupid. Um, and it's, it's out of his hands. What William Saliba can control of is pulling out his phone um, and recording it. What William Saliba can control is where that video has gone. He's obviously maybe sent it around his teammates for a bit of a laugh and someone has, has leaked it. It's been moved on, etc., etc. Whatever it is. All I'm saying is that whilst this this incident in isolation will not is not enough in my opinion to end William Saliba's career the combination of this and the interviews he's been given of late whereby he's taken every available opportunity to criticize Arsenal's manager is not going to do him any favors this is another thing in the long list of reasons that Mikel Arteta probably doesn't feel that William Saliba is ready to represent Arsenal football club right now he's not doing himself any favors um uh, you know, some of you are asking in the, the comments what what Mikel Arteta will say about it, what he'll do about it and, and how he'll address it in public. I think he'll just say that it's an internal matter because that's Mikel Arteta. He doesn't air people's dirty laundry. He doesn't talk um, about things that are going on behind the scenes. That's why the leaks were a big problem. The mole was a problem. That's why um, he doesn't really give us much on, on ongoing situations. That is why the way Mikel Arteta is. And because of that, I think he'll look at this situation um, and the fact that Saliba has been talking about him in the press constantly. I think because of that, 
this this won't do him any favours with Mikel Arteta. And the club have shown already that they're backing Mikel Arteta over any individual player. So it doesn't bode well for William Saliba off the back of this. Is it something he could never recover from? No, it's not that bad. You know, if it, if it was him doing the act, it would be very, very different. But for me, you know, it, it's something that he can come back from. It's something that, he, that can be turned around. It's a problem that can be forgotten over time it's just that at a time where everything is seems to be up in the air with Saliba whether he's going to be coming back at a time where he's firing shots back at the club for the way they handled his his arrival at the Emirates Stadium for this to come out is extremely damaging to him and I think a lot of people will will, will look at the kind of the, a bit of a conspiracy theory in terms of have that has someone whack this out now to fire a shot back at Saliba because of the way he's been talking about the club. Maybe, but I'll go back to my original point. If you don't film that, if you don't record it, if you don't keep it on your phone, there is zero chance of that ever coming out. So ultimately the lesson to be learned here for those of you that are younger than me, um, you know, maybe you're older than me, but you still like to pull out your phone all the time. The, the lesson to be learned here is whenever you find yourself in a weird situation, in a situation that's strange, in a situation that might be wrong, in a situation that is uncomfortable, your first instinct should not be to pull out your mobile phone and record it. And it's as simple as that. Because if you don't record it and there's no record of it in the eyes of everybody else, it simply did not happen. So there you are. Those are my thoughts on the William Saliba leaked video that's been uh, making waves uh, around the internet this morning. Thank you to every single one of you uh, for tuning in. At one point, we had over uh, 500 of you watching across the multiple platforms, which is incredible. Uh, a big thank you to every single one of you. And can I just ask uh, on your way out of the stream uh, that you please do smash that like button. It is so, so important. Uh, I wanted to get to 150. We're on 127. Let's get it up to 150 by the time the outro plays. I'd be very uh, grateful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and uh, if you're interested in becoming a member, then why not click that link in the description? Become a member of the Chronicles of Aguna um, channel. Um, you'll receive a number of benefits as well as uh, access to our Discord server and uh, members only content and our next video will be dropping for our gold members and above tomorrow so keep your eyes peeled for that if you're already signed up until later on today take care see you soon you're listening to the chronicles of aguna the arsenal podcast i'm martin tyler and you're listening